So we, <laughs> this just explains my damn week. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Hello if you are new. My name is Andrea Johnson. I am your spiritual inspiration here to inspire, empower, and teach you how to master your energy. Welcome to Conscious Coffee Talks where we discuss topics to expand our consciousness and improve our lives. I posted an Instagram questionnaire and I wanted to know what your burning questions were. And one of those questions guys was how to embark on a self-love journey, how to love yourself or what practices you can do to show yourself love. I wanted to make a video addressing this concept because one, I feel like it's a hot topic right now with fall time and fall in love with yourself, I think is a vibe right now online but self-love is essentially where everything starts and it's very powerful and there's several different conscious expansion viewpoints that we can look at it from let's first dive into what exactly is self-love now when most of us think of self-love we think of actions we think of love in action essentially we do an action we call it i'm doing this for self-love and then we get a feeling out of it right <laughs> hopefully it's love that is part of it but that's more of the human aspect of it now Self-love is honestly self-acceptance. It is accepting yourself in all aspects of yourself, the darker parts of you. And this is where you'll figure out in shadow work that you have to work through these darker parts of you, the unseen child essentially, to show it love, to show it attention, right? To shine your conscious awareness on these darker aspects of you. But in order to actually process the energy or to love yourself fully, you have to love those darker parts of you and you have to accept yourself. You have to show yourself love and compassion and honestly be the parent that you never had to yourself, right? And once you can truly accept yourself for who you are, what you are, uh, where you're at in your life. Only then can you really accept others and see them and their divine nature and understand they too have a journey as well too. And then you can show the love and compassion because you can show it for yourself. Let's go into more of the psychological side of it, of where we find the split, of where these light and dark aspects of ourselves first are established and how we got to where we are today. <laughs> Many of you out there probably have heard the term of soul fragmentation of of the soul basically splitting itself. That is the same thing of what we like to call in Reiki, the culturally created self. Essentially, this is how the ego is developed. And for those of you out there, if you don't know what the ego is, that is the idea that you think that you are. The ego is the false sense of self. It is the character that you're playing essentially to have a human experience because if we knew our divine nature and we didn't have an ego, then what would be the point of human nature or the human experience, right? How this is created, how these soul fragments are made or how the culturally created self is made is when our survival is threatened as a child. So this is where the ego starts to build itself and where childhood trauma essentially then dictates the rest of your life and creates these patterns what happens is somewhere along the way we felt our survival threatened or we felt like we didn't receive the love that we were supposed to receive correct what ends up happening is the soul suppresses aspects of itself of where it felt like it was threatened. So it's almost like this behavior mechanism that we have that is just ingrained in us because we're trying to survive, right? So for example, let's say as a child that you were naturally a very outspoken person. You probably said what was on your mind had no filter. Well, in society, it likes you to have a filter. It likes you to act in a certain way, right? So say you spoke your mind to somebody and you offended them. Maybe your parents scolded you saying you don't act like that or say that to somebody then dependent upon how you react personally to that situation your soul can fragment itself and then therefore moving forward you suppress your outspokenness therefore hindering your throat chakra or self-expression even though if it's not culturally accepted to speak our mind all the time or to put a filter on our thoughts that is still a suppression to the 
the soul and you not fully expressing yourself. So you may find yourself now because of that situation in childhood, going through life, never fully speaking what is on your mind, even if at some points it will benefit you in life. You might find yourself becoming a reserved person or a shy person all because of one incident that happened as you were a child, but that was just your natural reaction to survive in the situation because you felt the disconnect from love because you were being scolded. So when we feel that disconnect from love, we immediately feel our survival is threatened and we want to be accepted. We realize that our parents are our caretakers and our survival relies on them. So we want to be accepted by them. And even furthermore, we want to be accepted in our community or in society because when we have acceptance and big numbers like families or communities or like groups or things like that, that we become a part of as we age, it helps us feel safe, right? And the safety is the root chakra, the foundation of our existence, right? It is correlated directly to the survival of the human being and the body. So we cannot escape this very well. And like I said, you will go throughout your life consciously or unconsciously with this pattern of energy of self-suppression of never fully speaking your truth because of this incident and it will design your reality essentially. The subconscious will be the thing that manifests in your world and it will dictate all of your habits, all of your choices. It will be what creates your limiting beliefs. So if you're now a suppressed person, it can hold you back on opportunities that would otherwise be beneficial for you to be an outspoken person. Then you may decide at one point in your life, you're like, gosh, I really want to speak my truth. I really want to say how I feel or to be a confident speaker or something of that nature. And then you have to go within and heal that shadow, right? Heal what made you suppress yourself or made you afraid to speak your truth to others. And this is where the shadow work comes in. We are shining light on the shadow aspect of ourselves so we can recognize why we are the way that we are and the patterns that we have because this is important but yet not at the same time it's a little bit of contradiction it's important for us to recognize the patterns that are playing out and where they come from because it helps us to better understand ourselves to disrupt the pattern to choose a different reality or a different reaction right and the understanding of where it came from and how it got there at least I know for myself helps me develop compassion and acceptance of myself for how it got there. It's a relief almost, not necessarily saying not to take responsibility for your life or the decisions that you've made consciously or unconsciously, but it's almost like, oh my gosh, I understand why I am the way that I am. And it's almost a form of self-acceptance and therefore self-love. So it raises your vibration, right? It helps the body process that energy or alchemize it into a higher vibration because you are more understanding of yourself. You're more self-accepting of yourself. And this is where we're becoming the parent that we always needed because we are this understanding person for ourselves and we're patient with ourselves. We're showing ourselves unconditional love because moving forward, if we want to heal these shadow aspects of ourselves and create a different reality, it's gonna require different actions that we're not used to taking and it's going to be uncomfortable to push ourselves outside of the comfort zone. That is when you have to hold that self-love and that self-compassion for yourself to be able to do it efficiently. Because then when you're holding the state of self-acceptance, self-love, self-compassion, you're loving your child self, right? You're being the parent that you need, then that is the reality that you create and you're not holding judgment on yourself for you trying to do better, right? Or you maybe reverting back into old patterns, right? You're not judging yourself because you know where it came from, you have love for yourself and you know it's gonna get better. You're probably wondering, okay, I get that and I get you're saying I need to self-love and self-accept, but I'm still confused on how to actually do that, right? Guys, the best way that I can describe it is it's an integration of that shadow aspect of yourself. You're almost like 
embracing it and bringing it into your like being. I don't know how else to describe it. It's almost like if you were to imagine yourself as a child and to give yourself a hug and it's almost like the child becomes you. It almost feels like the acceptance is made. Maybe this doesn't happen for everybody, but there are legit actions that you can take to feel this integration, to actually start the process of integrating the shadow self within you to accept it. If you cannot cultivate or create that self-acceptance feeling and self-love just by the recognition or the conscious awareness of how it got there and why, and maybe a visualization of you hugging yourself as a child, what you can do is when you've done the shadow work and you recognize these aspects of yourself that you want to change or that do not serve you anymore because essentially they did at one point because your survival was threatened, right? It was to keep you safe. So what you want to do is make a list of all the things that you would deem your shadow self. And then you want to do the opposite. Back to my example. If you suppressed your voice, if you suppressed your expression, we'll say, what for you would be the opposite of suppressing your expression to speak your mind, right? Then you would have to speak your mind to integrate the suppressed self. Because guys, it is okay that we struggle with it. It is okay that it's gonna be hard at first, right? This is the acceptance. It's knowing that you are okay as you are 100% in your suppressed self form, your ego form, it is fine. And it is okay to feel scared to do different actions. So it's telling yourself that and then pushing past that fear to prove it wrong essentially and develop the skill or this new person that your higher self or your soul was at its core. It's just a letting go of the idea of you are this suppressed voice and just letting go of what isn't you to then allow what is you to come through. That's a little bit of a perception shift of what, what, what I was talking about, but essentially you see how you can look at this. So let's do another example. You want to improve your confidence. Maybe you don't see yourself as a confident person. Maybe there was something in childhood, maybe you got made fun of or something of that nature and you don't deem yourself confident anymore because of that and it's controlled your life, right? So then you would write down, am I not confident and what is it that you're not confident in? And then you're going to do the opposite of that, of the extreme. So how can you be a confident person, right? What does a confident person do? How can you show yourself that you are a confident person? For you, maybe a confident person dresses a certain way. Maybe we take baby steps like that. Maybe we change the look a little bit. We kind of dabble our toes in the cold water before fully jumping in, right? We are getting our ego accustomed to building up to a new vibration, this new character, right? So maybe this new confident person wears something that you normally wouldn't. Maybe it changed their hair color or, you know, maybe the confident person does an action that you don't feel currently confident in. Maybe it's not the full thing that you need to practice for, but maybe it's a step in the right direction. Maybe a confident person talks a certain way, you know, or maybe a confident person goes out with friends and they are just the life of the party, you know? So you're going to have to be the one that determines what is the opposite of what you want of the shadow, right? That's essentially what it is. Self-love is just self-acceptance. It's self-compassion. It is honestly being obsessed with yourself first before anything else in your life. It's giving you what you need in order to be your happiest, healthiest self. It's not pouring your energy into other people, things that don't fill your cup. It's you making you the priority and showing you the love that you've always deserved, the love that already exists within you. Because you have to give you what you need. You have to give 
you self-acceptance. You have to show you self-compassion. Because if we do not do that, guys, we cannot fully receive it, nor can we give it to other people. This is how other people are mirrors for us because what we reject in ourselves, we are going to reject in other people. And that's where people are the mirrors of what we need to work on internally for ourselves. And then we can go in and see, oh, I'm getting triggered because of X, Y, Z happened and why am I getting triggered? What aspect of myself is fragmented or am I not loving of myself to, am I judging myself so harshly and this other person? Then you bring yourself back to a sense of love and compassion because it is okay that you feel that way, right? because it's the judgment and the rejection and the shoving away, right? When we feel uncomfortableness, the guilt and the shame, that's when we push it away. That's when we shove it down and we don't wanna feel it and we act like it doesn't exist until it comes up again. <laughs> and that's where life tests you, right? So this is when you feel that shame and that guilt and that those triggers, those that anger and the shame and the guilt is underneath the anger. That's when you, instead of pushing it away, you bring it in, you accept it. You don't shove it down. You acknowledge you feel the way and you bring it in and you accept how you feel. You accept that you feel these feelings and the body processes it. You don't feel it for long. You just recognize it and understand more about yourself, right? And if you really wanna dive in deep to the childhood trauma and the shadow work, you can to help you establish more of self-acceptance or compassion for yourself or an understanding of yourself. But essentially, if you can create the self-love and acceptance in the moment of who you are, you can change it. The best way that I can describe this process, guys, is you accept how you feel and why you feel it is if you do know it. And this is you in the moment, right? It doesn't always have to be you and nor will it always be you because you're gonna take the steps to change your life and to be a different person to where this trigger is healed fully to where it doesn't hurt you anymore. When you accept it and you bring it in, the shame and the guilt and that trigger go away and it no longer drives your choices. You just feel love because love is your natural state of being, right? You just feel the authentic self within and then you can take action in your life from that point of being. And there is really no grit. There's no discomfort in the action that you take because you're touched back with love for yourself. So therefore, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you're holding that love, that sense of compassion, that you are doing the best that you can. And it is okay because things are going to get better, right? We're always doing the best that we can with the energy that we're dealing with, right? Because you begin to understand that how a person reacts and their emotional intelligence in the moment is honestly the best that they can do because that was the way their soul needed to relieve themselves, to save themselves essentially, was to express that energy for the body to get rid of it, to take an action maybe out of anger or to get rid of this trigger internally. Like that's how the soul is saving itself. Maybe a little bit off topic here. That's how you cultivate or create self-love for you. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean when you create self-love for yourself, that even though you'll see self-love in other people, it'll be mirrored back to you, but it doesn't change the fact that other people are responsible for their lives. It doesn't change the fact that other people are responsible for their actions, correct? And it doesn't change the fact that you have to put up with whatever so action or emotion that they're throwing your way. Even if you're holding a state of love and self-compassion, even if you've healed this aspect of you, right? And you're seeing it mirrored back in the other person, but you yourself are not triggered by it. And that is the important part. You just see it or the information or the situation as it is, the truth. So then you can lovingly draw boundaries out of self-love for yourself because you love yourself enough and the other person to not have to put up with those things, 
right? You don't have to put up with low level frequency if somebody's not willing to take responsibility in their life to change it, right? Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped you see self-love in a different light, more of like a conscious expanding light, how the darker aspects of us are created so then we can understand what self-love actually is or what love actually is so we feel that vibrational difference, right? I'm sending you all my light and all my love. Satnam.